All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. This is unfortunately my second time recording this video tonight. I got through my whole recording the last time, almost 45 minutes of recording, and my computer just froze. So forgive me if my voice sounds a little dissatisfied. It's just due to the fact that my voice hurts a little bit from talking for 45 minutes straight, and I'm a little disappointed that the video just completely screwed up. But we're gonna go through it again. I wanna get this out. I like to get a trade ideas list video out every single week. It's just a passion of mine and I know it helps people. So as long as it helps one person, I really don't mind recording this again and staying up late to edit it. As long as, you know, one person finds some sort of value out of it, that means the world to me. So here we go again, number two recording. If you tuned in last week, our list was pretty mixed. We really only had one killer setup, and that was Uber that actually held the back test and ran almost 5%. So that was a pretty good runner last week. We also had Oxy in IWM. I did end up entering Oxy later Monday after it dipped almost 3%. So I, I didn't trade the breakout on Oxy because it actually rejected and never happened. Then we also had IWM calls on watch and that ended up breaking out, but it did not have fall through. It actually fell back within the downtrend line. Overall, it did hold up the support pretty good around the 200s, lower 200s at the bottom of the demand zone. So I suppose you could have traded off of that. But overall, we were looking for that breakout and the breakout just did not fall through. It's very back and forth, very choppy for IWM. So hopefully next week, Oxy or you know, eventually uh, Oxy will play out. We have August calls on that one. You can see I have Oxy 65 here for two months out. We have till 816 on that. We also closed a QQQ put trade. I think it was on Monday, made 27% on that. We also opened up a new QQQ put swing and also AAL calls, 12 calls. And AAL this week is actually on the list. So we'll go over that chart later. So yeah, all swing trades down a little bit red right now, but decent amount of time on them. Not really too worried about the drawdown. All pretty much positioned with ideal size. Nothing crazy. Oxy two contracts. QQQ one since they were so expensive at $900 a piece. And AAL started very small as well. They were only a dollar a piece or, you know, $100 a piece. So nothing too bad. If you want to check these setups out, definitely go on the app. You can probably get them a little bit cheaper. Obviously, it's not financial advice. I'm not an advisor. But if you are interested in these, do some DD. You can maybe get a better discount than me right now. So before we get into our setups, we'll go over the economic calendar real quick. I'll try to blow through this as quick as possible so I can get to editing the video and it won't come out too late. Since this is my second time recording this video tonight, probably going to take at least two hours to record after the first video. And this one will probably be like two hours combined. And I spent the whole day charting as well. So hopefully we'll get through this pretty quick. Wednesday, we have CPI. Obviously, last time it came in line, which was good. Market liked it because every single CPI print was hot and over estimates. So we want to see it probably getting below estimate. Since the last time it was 3.4%, we probably want it below 3.4. Even though the median forecast is 3.4 again, that would just be sticky if it stayed at the same. So we want to see it probably at 3.3% and below. Same with core, previous was 0.3. Medium forecast this time is 0.3, so you probably wanna see it below that. And then on the same day, we do have the FOMC, which is just crazy. So we have CPI and FOMC in the same day. That makes this whole day a gamble. It's gonna be all over the place. It's probably gonna be very wild. I don't believe they're gonna cut interest rates, even though the Bank of Canada and the ECB did cut interest rates. I don't believe the Fed is going to, at least not in the United States. And that's because we're not really at the Fed's 2% target yet. And as well as, I mean, the econ data is now like awful like we have cpi kind of sticky we have the labor market still pretty good i mean people are still employed uh, i think the unemployment rate went to four percent so it's not like a crazy crazy kind of recessionary vibe just yet so why would they cut rates we have stocks at all-time highs we don't have econ data really collapsing that much yet obviously there's some ugly indicators but nothing crazy just yet and also we have loosened financial conditions um, multiple financial conditions indexes, they're basically at the same level as 2021, you know, 2020, when we had all that stimulus coming through, markets hitting all-time highs. So I wouldn't say that the market is <laughs> exactly matching interest rates or really restrictive monetary policy right now. So why would they cut rates? They don't really need to. So yeah, that's for Wednesday. It's pretty crazy. CPI, we got the Fed Chair Jerome Powell press conference at 2.30. So the FOMC interest rate decision will come out at 2 and then 30 minutes later, Jerome Powell. So maybe he will comment on the CPI that day. Obviously, we won't have the whole like Fed's opinion. We'll only have his opinion on what he thinks about the CPI. 
I'm just not sure if he will comment on it since it was the day of. We'll just have to see how that goes. And then on Thursday, we do have the producer side of inflation. We do have the PPI. So we got CPI Wednesday, PPI Thursday. And then on Friday, we do have one important one. It's going to be consumer sentiment at 10. So really Wednesday and Thursday are your most important, with Friday being third most important for consumer sentiment. All right, not too seasonality. We'll try to go through this pretty quick. We do have June 10th to the 27th here. And that's because I wanted to show you the probabilities here over the last 20 years. We have winning trades at 65% with a whopping 30% of summarized profit. So if you went short this period from the 10th to the 27th of June, you would have won 65% of the time and made a 30% summarized profit just by shorting. Now, if we go to the 10 year data set, winning trades actually goes down to 60% with summarized profit at 15% the last 10 years. So it's pretty similar. There's still a pullback kind of historically here, but I mean, both data sets, 10 year and 20 year, both good summarized profit, both decent winning trade probability over the last 10 and 20 years. We could change this to this week. So we'll go from the 10th to the 14th, see how that looks. So for this week on the 10 year, we only have winning trades at 50%. So if you went short this week coming up the last 10 years, you still would have made a summarized profit of 9%, which is good. So you still would have came out positive, but you would have only won 50% of the time. If you go to the 20 year data set for this week coming up, we only have winning trades at 37% and then summarized profit at 5%. But overall, you still did come out positive if you went short this period the last 20 years. Even though you only would have won 37% of the time, you still came out with a profit. So actually the most recent data set, a little bit higher win rate, a little bit higher summarized profit than the 20 year data set. But overall, this week still kind of averages a pullback. We'll see how that goes. And then as well, actually the pullback averages from now till the end of June as well, at least till the 27th or so. So seasonality is looking a little bit bearish, especially over the whole month. We'll see how that goes. Obviously, market's not really flashing a crazy bear signal yet, but we are at some pretty high levels. All right, now to the setups. We'll try to get through this as quick as possible. We do have AAL or American Airlines this is our first one. I'm actually already in this, so if you do enter, you probably will be getting a better price for calls than me for September. I really recommend anything if you're going to try to bottom pick or try to buy something that's very oversold or kind of just kind of still in a downtrend like this. You definitely want to buy time because you want to be able to deal with drawdown risk if it wants to kind of pull back further, continue the downtrend, etc. And we also do have a little bit more room till we hit this actual low here from 2023. That's about 1086. So Buying time could give you a little bit more room here before it hits support if it wants to go any lower. And overall, more time on trying to time a bottom like this or trying to buy a contrarian type trade where everybody's selling and you're buying, you definitely want to buy time on that time and also in the money or at least closer to the money. And AAL this week is pretty simple. We want to see a breaking out of this downtrend line. It's that simple. Overall, we'll need to get over 12 17 which is the gap start so if it gets over that that will enter the gap and that's basically all of mine is this big gap i'm hoping it can get up there i'm hoping people will be attracted to it go long and try to get the gap fill since 80 percent of gaps do usually fill so that's for aal looking at calls you saw my position on the app september 12 calls further out lots of time all right number two we're going over hood or this is robin hood which has actually been doing pretty good i feel like bitcoin and you know, the retail on GameStop and AMC and stuff. I feel like they've been doing pretty good. Their earnings have been improving and overall probably getting more trading volume and more money onto their platform. So they've been doing pretty good and kind of been running with some of the meme stocks the past couple of days. But now we are starting to pull into that upper trend line. It actually did reject pretty hard off of that. You see, we have a test one. We got a test two, test three rejection. We have a test one, test two below. So overall, I mean, usually trend lines like this, they will get a third test, which makes me think we can eventually pull back into this uptrend line right here. Maybe overall we can get back down to 2055, which is this big back test level right here. Obviously a bounce level right here and also a resistance point right here. So you got multi-confluence. This is obviously an important level at 2055. You got multiple points of resistance and also supports holding. So for hood here, I am looking for a pullback, a test three rejection, trying to see some fall through back down to 2055. I'll probably only look at July expiration minimum. Maybe if I have a wider price target, like down to here, I'll probably go with September and above. And obviously to get lower, it would need to break this uptrend line. It would need to break this back test level, etc. It probably need a lot of time to do that. So make sure you buy a lot of time. 
if you're gonna shoot for anything past 2055. But right now, this is kind of the short term PT I'm looking for. And as well as this little uptrend line as well. And overall, this will need to break in order to go lower. So that's for hood. I'm looking at puts. And it may just need some patience overall to get under this major key level. All right, and last but not least for our individual setups, we're going over SMH here. So this is a pretty clear bearish divergence setup. Obviously, it probably needs a little bit more confirmation, kind of like the RSI bending a little bit right here. You want to see it kind of reacting and rejecting this area, not trying to go higher. And you might need a rejection candle on the one week to do that. But I am starting to eye this. You got price making a higher high with RSI kind of at a lower point than back here. So that is a potential bearish RSI divergence on the one week. If we go down to the shorter term time frame on the one day, we'll get rid of these real quick. There is another way to go about this and you wouldn't want to go short until you break under 250. Why 250? It's an important back test level and it's held the past two sessions, Thursday and Friday. It's clear support. Now for SMH here, it is made up of almost 25% or more NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is the largest holding in this ETF and that will need to break down in order for SMH to go lower. Now, if we can get NVIDIA kind of as a sell the news after the split here coming up, that could definitely set up SMH for downside. That would require Wall Street, Everybody's starting to take profit using that retail activity, especially given it's going to be cheaper. A lot more retail is going to try to pile in. That gives Wall Street an advantage. That gives them more liquidity and they can exit. They have massive positions. They need liquidity to fill those orders and they do it gradually over time. You're not just going to see a fire sale instantly all the time. It takes time for them to unload those positions. And with this increased retail volume, I feel like that will make it possible. You also have insiders starting to sell out. You got the CEO of NVIDIA starting to make a plan to unload almost 1 billion worth of stock. So that's another thing to consider. And overall, I mean, most splits, I feel like they're a good opportunity to take profit, sell the news event. So that's for SMH. There's two ways to look at it. Longer term, on the one week, you have that one week bearish RSI divergence potentially. That could be good for longer data puts. And for short data puts, if you wanted to wait for 250 to break down, that gives you a setup. Maybe you can fill this gap down and hopefully that NVIDIA split will be a sell the news event and you can get that. So if you want to wait for 250 to break down, good for short term. If you want to start entering now, go with longer term puts, see if that one week RSI divergence will play out to the downside and maybe you can get a nice pullback on SMH. All right, and on to the indexes. So last week we were just focused on it holding and closing over your back test level. It was that simple. You had 525 or the 524.60s, which is rounded up to 525. That was the back test level. Here was Friday's close. It held that up. So I mentioned you could probably just look for dip buys back into 525 or, you know, at the 524.60s area. Really any of that spot, that's a good area to add. And you can see why. I mean, it held up all week and it ripped back up to 533. So 533 was our highest projection point we could kind of go for. And we went above that, we went up to 4, 537 almost. So unfortunately with technical analysis, you are a little bit limited on price targets. If you already have a big resistance, you can't really project higher than that. Unless you use Fibonacci extensions, kind of like this, you start from here, you go to the low, and then that 1.272 is your breakout target. So once this broke out, you use that 1.272 as a price target and it rejected right off of it. So if you go to all time highs, sometimes the 1.272, uh, the 1.618, those are the only kind of price targets you can go off of at all time highs, especially if you have nothing to go off of. So for this week, it's very simple. 5.33 is your short term support. I'll show you why. It's a back test. It's also last week's kind of structure low right here. So it held here and also held here. And this is also a back test all the way from back here. So this is old resistance turn new support. So if 533 breaks, that's probably a little bit bearish and it probably will try to head back down, you know, 530 and so on and so forth. So just make sure you have these Fibonacci's out. Literally, I can even get rid of it and show you again real quick. You get the Fibonacci tool. You start from this high, you go to this low. That gives you your 1.272 extension. It gives you your back test right here. Uh, it gives you your support for this week right here, which is also old resistance here. So that's all you got to do. And then mark that up. Uh, 536.89, which is Friday's high, rounded up to 537. It will need to get over that 537 to get more highs. Right now, look for scalps off 533 if you can get it. Very short term scalps. Otherwise, under that for a flush, probably look at put scalps as well. As long as you have VIX correlating, ramping up, that 533 flush could be good for a put trade. So that's for spy. So that's simple this week. 533 is nearby. You got the 
Friday's high, 537. You need to hold over this. Otherwise, you can flush back into the moving averages and also your old back test around 525. All right, and on to QQQ. So for this week, it's very similar to SPY. You also have a back test that you need to watch. So you got 460.50, which is this area right here. And you also have the 459.20s or the, you know, the 1.272 extension. So you can probably just call it 460.50 to 460 flat. That is a potential support or back test area, as you see. If it pulls into that, you look for scalps, back tests, stuff like that for a bounce. If it flushes under that, it's very simple. It probably will try to go back down, but you do need to close under 460 to do that. The only thing I wouldn't recommend if you are going to short, make sure there's a decent amount of room between price and the EMAs because you don't want to just short directly into the 9 and 21 EMA on the one day because you can get caught in something like this. You can get caught in stuff like this. I mean, I can show you a bunch of times where the 9 21 just holds and people shorting the hole like this just get totally screwed. So you want to make sure there's a decent kind of gap between price and the nine EMA, kind of like this. Like you have the nine here at 458 and you have price at 463. So that's a decent amount of gap between the EMA and the price. So it's kind of a, an extension over the EMAs. And those are kind of the best to short. If you're really gonna short while it's trending over this, you want that gap between price and that. Because if you try to short the hole and short into this, you can get caught in something like this. So that's all I mean by that. Overall, we need to get under 460.50s and also the 460 flat. So just mark that zone. If you don't even wanna draw these fibs, you could literally just make a zone from 460.50 to 460. Just start from here to here, make a little square zone. It needs to get under that to go lower that could also act as your support since we're trending over now so that's the only level i got no other levels of importance really since we're kind of in the middle of that you can mark friday's high at 465 70s and that's about it but yeah i mean last week was pretty straightforward we were looking for that back test to hold we were looking for a 921 ema bounce we got that as well so here was friday's close i held that up I held your back test big wick off the back test area right here held the 21 ema as well and then we just projected up to 460 max. It actually hit, you know, that Friday high, which is way higher than 460 at 465.70s. So either way, you had 10 points from 450s to 460. That's really good. Even though we missed a additional points up here because we had no resistance to go off of. Either way, that's a pretty nice bounce. It was a nice little play to go off of. As well as we had VIX, we were looking at that. We were expecting VIX to go a little bit lower. So last week was setting up for a bounce. Pretty sure I mentioned that in the last video. And for this week, it's pretty simple. The levels just aren't as good. So you just want to watch 460.50, like I said, and as well as 460 flat. Back test, support, if it flushes under that, it goes lower, simple. All right, and last but not least, we'll go over the VIX. So last week, you really only had this big red bar to go off of, as well as that close under 1367. That combination, plus that 50 and 200 SMA rejection, that pretty much had me expecting volatility to head back to 1237 and 1182, which was bullish for market. And that's kind of why we came to the conclusion that that 921 EMA bounce on SPY and QQQ last week looked the most probable compared to downside, because you have volatility selling off, very aggressively Friday. We had closes under the major volatility signal at 1367. So 1367 has kind of been our volatility point. We want to see getting over that for the market to be bearish. Uh, it fell back under that. So, and really every time volatility goes back under 1367, you really do have these kind of aggressive flushes, especially recently. You have it right here. You're like six days down uh, after a close under 1367 here. A big rejection out 1367 here and 1367 flushing right here again so it's kind of been a pretty good point and we've been using it for both upside and downside projections so for this week we are back towards the lows i've showed you multiple times these are multi bottom lows from 2023 bottom bottom so on and so forth you got 1182 which is december bottom right here it bounced the last time so i'm kind of expecting the same scenario you want to be cautious at these lows the vix can definitely spring back up here uh, i definitely wouldn't want to start looking at longs or like long-term swings on spire qqq with the vix at this spot i usually wait for volatility to get ramped up i wait for a big dip in spire qqq and i buy that but when the vix is kind of pulling into the lows here i really don't like it and i definitely go a little bit slower and i kind of only look for call scalps like i'll buy the dip still but only for day trades so hopefully that makes sense vix is obviously volatility on the s p probably i think it's like 14 to 27 days out or maybe you could probably even round that up to 30 days of volatility so the vix is really good for like swing trades and stuff and when it's pulling into lows like this like i said i really don't like to go along the market now if there's a big gap between the lows and like this like last week we had 
VIX here still pretty close to 13. We had a lot of room back down to lower 12s and 1182. So it was a little bit different. We've already kind of sold into the lows. Pretty much had last week's projection happen. We just didn't hit the 1182 yet. Now I want to be a little bit more cautious and I don't really have a clear setup as good as last week. Like I said, SPY and QQQ last week. I mean, we had price right here. We had a close over the back test. It actually pulled into the back test Monday. So you had multiple times to enter and then it ran up. Plus you had VIX still a little bit higher and that gave it more room to sell off. And like I said, we are now at the lows. So that's why I want to be cautious. That's why the setups this week on SPY and QQQ aren't as good. We do have those short-term supports. Like I said, you have SPY of 533. That's a good short-term support to scalp off of. QQQ, you have 460 50 to 460 flat. You want to watch. So yeah, that's really all I got for you guys this week. I'm sorry if this comes out a little bit late, but like I said, I had to record this for a second time. I'm really hoping when I stop this video, it's not going to freeze again so I don't flip out. But I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I put a lot of time and effort into them every single Sunday. I mean, it takes me about three or four hours to chart. I go through 233 names. Here's all the names I go through right here. This is my main watch list. I go through every single one and I break them down into three. And that's all I do every Sunday. And then I record and then I have to edit and you have to render it. The rendering takes about an hour to turn it into a good file. And then I upload it to YouTube, that takes a bit. And then I type out the trade ideas list as well. So, so there is a written report on this as well. So each setup gets a chart. If you're a part of the Discord, definitely go to the Watchlist channel. You will see a written report of these setups, at least for you know the three. I don't go over SPY and QQQ really in the Watchlist channel because we do it in the video. But for these three, I post the chart and I put if I'm looking for calls or puts. So if you don't have time to watch the videos, definitely check out the Discord. Go to the Watchlist channel. You will find that. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff. VIX here, you're pulling into the lows. Be cautious. It can definitely start holding up and trying to bounce. I don't think the market's really going to do anything big until we start breaking under 1182. And maybe the market would be a little bit more bullish there. But yeah, this is a pretty big inflection point for the VIX. It's bounced here. It bounced here last time. You want to be a little bit more cautious going long up here. But I love you guys. I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.